This evening, I would like to talk about ethical practice, specifically about the nature and importance of ethical practice as is it, it is understood from a non-dual standpoint. To see why ethical practice matters, I'll begin by laying out the metaphysics. We see before us three seminal paths today. The path of waking up or radiant peacefulness, the path of wisdom, or supreme intelligence, and the path of love, or seamless, wholehearted, charitable, outflowing love. We may embark on one of these three paths or on more than one. If we ask ourselves the question, where do these paths all converge? The answer is that they all converge in the one supreme reality. This supreme reality is without name and form, is entirely whole, is complete as it is, and therefore as it is, is entirely without attributes. The Taoists call it the Tao. Zen masters variously call it the one mind our original nature, the unborn Buddha mind, and so on. Advaita Vedantists refer to it as the true self or as para Brahman or as para Atman. All these are simply names that are beside the point. For the nameless absolute is entirely ineffable and whole. Yet, it is the very nature of the supreme reality to stir into movement, to rise into becoming. I submit that the first hypostasis or emanation, the first subtle form of the supreme reality is peacefulness or ananda, supreme, perfect peacefulness. In Sanskrit again, ananda. Likewise, its natural attribute is supreme intelligence or wisdom. And its third natural attribute is love, karitas love, overflowing, generous love. The supreme reality then is awake and peaceful, vibrating with supreme intelligence or living wisdom and all heart full of plentiful outflowing love.
ethical practice then is simply the way in which we as apparently finite beings, as apparent body minds, gradually cultivate quote unquote ourselves to the point at which we are resonating with these divine qualities or attributes such that we are more contentedly peaceful, more alive with wisdom, and more all full of charitable love. Virtue is simply the natural, seamless, effortless expression of the divine through the prism of the body-mind. In other words, to act virtuously is to be wholesomely attuned to what one truly is. Some scaras or false identities are precisely going the wrong way. They are contractions or apparent turnings away from these three divine attributes of the supreme reality. Ethical practice to be more concrete reveals itself in a form of karma yoga, that is, in selfless, loving, virtuous action without a doer and without an attachment to outcome. To speak even more specifically, Words are arising right now. They are coming forth through this vehicle. The point is not to resist them. The point is to let them come. So long as they are truthful and wholesome. Hence, the Buddhist insistence on right speech. Consider any action from this karma yogic viewpoint. A dog scrapes at the door and there is just the getting up out of Zazen, just the letting him out, just the letting him go to the bathroom. No hitch no resistance, no fight, simply done on behalf of this sentient being who is presently in need. Likewise, there is just the opening of the blinds, just the closing of the blinds, without any credit being taken, without any sense of a burden, Everything is just so. There is just the washing of dishes, just the making of food, just indeed the undertaking of all ordinary daily actions without there being a doer and without taking credit and without getting tied to attachments and aversion. Ethical practice is precisely action without a single hitch.
if the totality of practice is like a beautiful car capable of shifting from one gear to another, if Zazen is like sitting beautifully in neutral, sitting in part, then actions throughout the course of the day are like shifting effortlessly from first gear to second, from second to third, from third to fourth to fifth, possibly to sixth, down to fifth to fourth to third, up to fourth, down to third, down to second, down to first, and back to seated, sitting position. It must be understood that there is no essential difference between sitting still and moving about in the world. Seated practice and ethical practice are simply two wholesome manifestations of the divine source, albeit in different modes. What this discussion should tell us is that ethical practice is just as important, if not more important, than seated practice. Everything must be brought into complete alignment with this unnameable source so that there is no fundamental conflict between the movement of this body mind and the emanation forth of the divine source. All of which is felt in simply allowing anything to occur provided that it is so mindfully seen and so truthfully undertaken that it leaves no residue. In brief, all of this is what peacefulness and clarity feel like. The whole path unfolds so beautifully that in time, peacefulness, wise penetrating insightfulness, and deep love should become natural expressions of body-mind which are themselves nothing but natural expressions of the supreme divine reality. <laughs>